hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is sheila for those who are new here you're very welcome on this channel i make crochet tutorials or any crochet related content so if that's your area of interest please consider subscribing to my channel so in today's video we're going to be learning how to make this durag that i came up with on sunday and it has been making rounds on social media and i decided to do a written pattern so i'll be dropping the link of the written pattern in the description box below and then um this is going to be the video so for those who would prefer the written pattern the link is going to be in the description box but for those who are more visual like um, some of my friends then here is a tutorial for you The materials you'll need are a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook which is a k-hook and a pair of scissors and yarn so for this project i'll be using red hat super server yarn and it recommends a five millimeter crochet hook it's um 333 meters and one skin should be more than enough for your project you can actually make two durags from this same exact skin so i have half of my yarn left and this should be enough for me to finish my project and i'll be using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook to get a loose stitching so that my stitches are not so tight and the durag is more flowy if you know what i mean i want to loosen my tension using a bigger hook uh, than the recommended hook for this particular yarn so uh, let's get started so uh, you can find any yarn that recommends a five millimeter crochet hook because I know not everyone has access to red hat but if you have any yarn that recommends a five millimeter then you can go ahead and use that but use a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook so that you achieve loose tension so we are beginning our project and we are going to start off with a slip knot and you're going to make a chain of seven we are going to start with the straps that go behind our durag i'll be attaching photos as i speak so that you know exactly what i'm talking about so we're going to start with a strap the very first strap this project is made of two panels and i'm working my very first panel then we shall go on to the second one then we shall be doing the attaching so you're going to start off with a chain of seven this applies to uh, all sizes because I'm doing for an adult the size of an adult head so we have one two three four five six and seven so when you have your seven chains you're going to go into the third chain from the hook with a mini bin stitch so we don't count this as a chain so it's one two and the third chain from the hook you're going to go in there with a mini bin stitch and for the mini bin stitch you insert your hook pull up a loop so you have two loops on your hook yarn over insert your hook into the same exact chain pull up a loop so you should have one two three and four loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all so that's a mini bin stitch then you're going to chain up one skip the next chain and go into the next chain with a mini bin stitch so insert your hook pull up a loop you should have two loops on your hook yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop you should have four loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all so that's our second mini bin stitch then you're going to chain up one skip this next chain and go into the very last one with a mini bin stitch so insert your hook pull up a loop you should have two loops on your hook yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop you should have four loops on your hook uh, yarn over and pull through all 
So at this point, we have a total of three mini bean stitches for our very first row. So we are going to row two. So you're going to chain up one, turn your work, and we are going to continue working mini bean stitches. But this time, they're going to go into these spaces attached to the mini bean stitch. We are not going to be working anything in the chain one spaces. Our stitches are going to go in that space. There's that space beside the mini bean stitch. That's where we work our next mini bean stitch for the next row. So um, after chaining your one and turning, you're going to go into this space, place a mini bean stitch. I hope you still remember how to uh, work it. I'll be describing it in the description box. I'll be uh, giving the instructions of how to achieve it. Chain one, place a mini bean stitch into the next mini bean stitch. Chain one and go into the very last mini bean stitch, but you go into both loops. You can see this one and this one and place your very last mini bean stitch. So we're going to repeat row two. I'm going to show you one more time. You're going to chain one, turn your work, place a mini bean stitch in this mini bean stitch, the very first one. Chain one, place a mini bean stitch into the next. Chain one. Place your very last mini bean stitch into the last mini bean stitch. So don't forget to always chain one in between. So this is what I have. I'm going to repeat this until I have a total of um, 60 rows. 60 rows. So, so far I have three. I'm going to continue working this until I have a total of 60 rows. And then I'll show you what to do after that. So this is row four, and I'm just repeating what I did for row two and row three. So go ahead and do that until you have a total of 60 um, rows of mini bean stitches. You can see the texture is already working out itself. So let me continue to do that and I'll be back on row 61 so at this point i have my 60 rows of three mini bean stitches each row and this is how my work looks like and now we're going to row 61 but you're going to do something different i finished my last mini bean stitch and before i chain one remember we've been just chaining one and turning our work but this time we're not going to do that you're going to do something different you're going to chain 21 remember this is one size for all so you don't have to worry about uh if you're making a mistake or not if you're having the same uh hook size then your sizing should be should be perfectly fine so you're going to chain up 21 so one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. This is twenty-one. So this is row sixty. After row sixty, you chain twenty-one instead of chaining one. You chain twenty-one, and then go into the third chain from the hook with your mini bin stitch. So here. And place a mini bin stitch and then chain one skip one chain and go into the next chain with a mini bin stitch chain one um, skip one chain and go into the next mini bin stitch with one mini bin so you go into the next chain with one mini bin stitch chain one skip the next chain and go into the next chain with a mini bin stitch and continue to do that all the way across the chain 
Don't forget to chain one in between the mini bin stitches. So this stitch works up really fast and I'm sure I'm going to be working several projects with it. I've already made a dress, I've already made a sweater vest and now I've made a durag. I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a cardigan out of this. So look out for that. So I have two chains left before I go on to the main body of the three mini bin stitches. So I've chained my one and I'm going to go into that. I'm going to skip this and go into the last chain with one mini bin stitch. And then I'll chain up one and go into this mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch, chain one, go into the next mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch, chain one, go into the next mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch. So we've worked all the way across and you should be having a total of 13 mini bin stitches all the way across. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And now for the next row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, go into the very first mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch, chain one, go into the next mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch, chain one go into the next mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch and repeat this all the way across for your row 62 because this is row 62 And for row 62, you should be having the same number of mini bin stitches all the way across. That is 13. So you had 13 for row 61. You should be having the same for row 62. And we are going to repeat row 62 until we have uh, 66 rows in total. So row 62, 63, 64, 65 and 66 should look the same. So chain one, turn your work, and repeat until you have a total of 66 rows. So this is 61, 62. You're going to do four more rows, and then I'll meet you back and show you what I'll be having. So here I am with my 66 rows. This is what you should be having right now, and I'm on this end. This strap is on this side and I've ended my work on this side. So we are going to start doing some decreases on this side to do a well-shaped durag so that it doesn't create a bulge when we wear it on the corner of our head at the back. So um, row 67, you're going to chain up one and turn your work. And instead of working your stitch in this one, in this very first mini bin stitch, you're going to move on to the next mini bin stitch. Skip this and go into the second and place your mini bin stitch there. And this should create a decrease. Chain one and continue to work your mini bin stitches all the way across. That means this row is going to have one mini bin stitch less than the previous rows and it should be having 12 mini bin stitches. That is row 67. Should be having 12 mini bin stitches instead of 13. So continue to work as usual all the way across until you get to the end of your row. And on this other side, we are not going to be doing any decreases. It's going to remain flat.
okay so I'm placing my last mini bin stitch in the last stitch so after this you're going to chain up one and turn your work so I've told you this side with the strap is going to remain flat like straight no decreases that means after chaining one you go into the very first mini bin stitch and place a mini bin stitch there chain one go into the next mini bin stitch and work your way all the way across and row 68 should have a total of 12 mini bin stitches the same number of stitches as row 67 so go all the way across until the very last stitch So this is the very last stitch of uh, row 68 and we've worked our mini bin stitch and you can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 stitches. So we are going to row 69 and we are going to do another decrease. So you're going to chain up one, turn your work. This is row 69. Skip this we are on this side without the strap skip this and go into the next mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch and go all the way across chaining one and mini bin stitch into the next mini bin stitch until you have a total of 11 mini bin stitches all the way across okay so we have our 11 mini bin stitches you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven and we are not decreasing still on this side so we're going to row this was this is row 69 and for row 70 you're going to chain one and turn and since we're on the side with no decreases you go into the very first stitch with one mini bin stitch and then continue all the way across until you have a total of 11 mini bin stitches so the number of stitches for this row should be the same as the previous row this is row 70 Should be having a total of 11 mini bin stitches all the way across so we've worked our 11 mini bin stitches and row 71 is a decrease row that means you're going to chain one and turn and skip this very first one go into the second one with a mini bin stitch so you can notice that your work is slanting to the side and this is perfectly fine if you see something like this you're on the right track so continue to do one mini bin stitch chain one until you have a total of 10 mini bin stitches so the number of mini bin stitches keeps reducing because you're doing some decreases on the edges so 10 mini bin stitches for row 71 And when you're done with row 71, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we're going to row 72, and it should be having the same number of mini bin stitches as row 71. So you're going to just chain one and continue to work your mini bin stitch into the very first stitch and all the way across, not forgetting to chain one in between. 
So we want a total of 10 mini bin stitches for this row, which is row 72. So we have our 10 mini bin stitches. Let's cross check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And now we're going to row 73, which is our very final row for the upper side. You're going to chain up one, which I've already done, and turn your work and skip the very first stitch and go into the next stitch. And place a mini bin stitch there. And then chain one and continue to place one mini bin stitch in each mini bin stitch below not forgetting to chain one in between the mini bin stitches so um for row 73 you should be having a total of nine mini bin stitches so we're coming to the end and we have our very last mini bin stitch and you're going to chain up one and leave a long strand because sometimes we need them cut your yarn and then pull through so this is how your work should look like at this point <coughs> you can see where the decreases are and this is the very top of our dirag and now we are going to be working something different to get the length that goes to the back the one that forms the backdrop of the dirag so um, you're going to grab your yarn the same exact yarn definitely because I want this to be in one color and you're going to make a slip slip knot and you're going to turn your work upside down so you have this you're going to attach your yarn on this side here so where I want to attach my yarn is below the very first mini bin stitch so here there are those spaces where the mini bin stitches were placed that's where I'm going to attach my yarn here and I'm going to attach let me put this out of the way maybe confusing so after this you're going to chain up one and place one mini bin stitch in that space that same exact space so I have my mini bin stitch here chain one go into the next space with a mini bin stitch place a mini bin stitch, chain one and continue to do that until you have a total of nine mini bin stitches this is three four chain one five chain one six chain one seven chain one eight chain one nine so i told you to go ahead until you have nine mini bin stitches so we have one two three four five six seven eight and nine and you have this one stitch left in between the strap and this side and we are not going to work anything in that space you're going to leave it blank so you're going to chain up one and turn your work so I'll call this row one of the backdrop so this is row one so we are on row two of the backdrop you're going to go into the very first mini bin stitch with a mini bin stitch chain one go into the next and continue to do this all the way across don't forget to always chain one in between the mini bin stitches 
I'm sorry I keep reminding you to do that because uh, sometimes you can forget and then the work doesn't turn out as uh, expected. So I have to always keep mentioning it. So row two of the backdrop should have the same exact number of um, of stitches all the way across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we are going to continue doing this nine mini bin stitches for each and every row until you have a total of 22 rows. So this is one, this is two, and we need 20 more rows of uh, the backdrop. The backdrop in total should be 22 rows. So, so far we've done two and we want a total of 22. So we want 20 more so that from here up to the end of the backdrop, it's uh, 35 rows. So let me go ahead and keep working until I have my rows ready and then I'll show you what to do from there. So I've done my total of 22 rows for the backdrop and from here to here that is a total of 35 rows. So once you have that uh, you're going to just chain one and cut your yarn. I'm still going to leave a long strand. If you would wish your backdrop to be longer this is the point where you have to adjust. If you want it shorter, you do less rows. If you want it longer, you do more rows. The backdrop is this, the backside of your neck, the part that covers the backside of your neck. If you want it longer, you do more rows. If you want it shorter, you do less rows. But for me, this is what I did. And now you're going to go ahead and do the same exact panel one more time so that you have two of them. So this is how my first panel looks like. I've already done my second one and let me introduce it at this point. They should be identical. Same tension, same everything. So you can see this. We have the same exact thing going on on both panels. And now it's time to uh, align everything and put everything together by attaching the necessary sides. So let's do that. So right now we are going to the very final part of our work and we're going to be joining the top, the slanting side up to down to the end of the backdrop. But I kept leaving very long strands at the end of my work and I told you we would need them somehow. So you're going to just choose one and I'm going to choose this longer one and you're going to grab your tapestry needle and put this thread through. Make sure your tapestry needle has a bigger eye because if it's too small it's always very inconveniencing to put it through. So um, you're going to turn your work to the side that you want to be the wrong side. But I don't have a wrong side because everything looks good and almost the same. So I'm going to just start joining. So we're going to start from the top. We're going to be going into the mini bin stitches. So here and the first one on the other side. And then you pull through. First leave this uh, unworked, we don't need it actually. If you can cut it a bit so that it doesn't get into your way, you can just cut it, but then leave something small so that you can move it in later. So I'm joining one, each mini bin stitch to the mini bin stitch, and then each chain one space to the chain one space. So that's what I'm going to do. So mini bin stitch and you grab the next mini bin stitch, pull through and then join the chain one to the chain one and then pull through. And we are going to repeat that all the way across.
So I'm done joining the upper part and this is how the right side looks like. So it's very, very neat. And then now we're going to be joining the slanting part, this part here. So you're going to go into each row on both sides and you just join. Just find the most suitable place to uh, join from. But make sure what you're joining on this side should look exactly the same as the one on this side. If it's a big stitch, it should be big on the opposite side. If it's a small space, it should be small on the other side. So continue to do this. Okay, so we have this finished and now we are going to go down, joining row to row. So keep joining normally. So I'm going in between the stitches and then in between like a stitch and then in between the stitch so that we don't have big spaces in between. So I grab this, this is a big stitch. I grab the, the big stitch on the opposite side and join. And then I go into this small space and then go into the small space on the opposite side and then join. And I'm going to continue doing that all the way down. Just make sure you're matching your stitches right. You don't want to get to this end when one side is longer than the other. So keep that in mind. So I'm coming to the end of my uh, joining. I'm just joining a few more stitches. So this is the very last stitch that I'm joining together and I'll join it twice just to secure my yarn even more. And that's it. I'm going to remove this and this is how the dirag looks like. So this is the right side of our work. This is the wrong side where we've been stitching from and this is how everything has come out. So I'm going to just get my crochet hook and pull this to the wrong side. Okay. And this is how things are looking like right now. It's more like a hoodie, but... Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is to get rid of all these strands that are lying around. All these strings so that our work is neat and that's pretty much it we are done with our dirag it's ready to wear and uh, it can be styled in several different ways i'll be attaching photos of me trying to style it on my dummy and my model wearing it so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial thanks so much for watching i'll see you in my next video bye